Rental properties are some of the most popular investments among individual investors and it's pretty simple to understand why. The idea of buying a property with the bank's money and then having your tenant reimburse your mortgage is very appealing. After a few decades then you own your property free and clear. It has probably gained a lot of value by then and also paid off a lot of income. There are also then tax advantages on top of that and it helps you diversify away from the stock market. I have invested in rental properties myself and I liked the idea so much that I eventually even went to work in private equity real estate. But are rental property is a good investment today in 2023. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a real estate investment firm and unlike other firms, uh, we don't invest only in private properties. We also invest in publicly listed real estate in investment opportunities such as REITs and other REIT-like entities. And today's video, I'm gonna give you five reasons why I think that today is actually a really bad time to buy a rental property. And in this video, I'll skip the obvious, the surge in interest rates, the high prices, we know all of that, so I'm not gonna talk about these reasons, I'll, uh, I'll talk about some other ones. So reason number one, the returns of rental properties are typically not nearly as high as advertised. When you first start learning about these investments, you typically end up here on YouTube and you see some video of some real estate guru who tries to sell you their course and so naturally they're really gonna hype up the benefits of rental properties. They will typically talk about really high rates of returns like 20, uh, 25 or even 30 percent in some cases but the real returns really aren't nearly as high. Uh, you know Warren Buffett became the richest man on earth by compounding at right around 20 percent so so I can guarantee you that rental property investors are not just casually compounding at 25, 30 percent otherwise we would have a lot more rental property billionaires than we that we currently have Instead, I think that most investors are miscalculating their returns because of two reasons. Firstly, rental property investors will typically understate the expenses when calculating returns. So what they would do is they will look at their total rent, then they will divide that by the equity that they have invested in the property that will give them their cash on cash return and then they will add an estimate of annual appreciation and then they end up with a figure like 30-40% return. But the real net operating income of a rental property is typically just around half of the rental income. So here already you have to divide the rents by half and that still may not even really take into account all the big expenses that you have once in a while. Perhaps your, your roof is gonna leak, uh, it's gonna cause some water damage in your property, your tenant doesn't care so much, doesn't inform you about it, things get worse and suddenly you hit with a repair bill that might cost you five years worth of rent. If you properly account for all these expenses, already you see returns come down very significantly. And then the second thing that people typically uh, don't take into account is the value of their own time. Rental property investors will invest a huge amount of time working on their property. I mean, they first have to, you know, find the deal, they have to negotiate it, then they have to market it to a tenant. Before that, they even have to find a financing, so talk to different banks, then they market it to a tenant, uh, maybe they might have some fixes to do, then the property management. All of that takes a lot of time. And rental property investors will assume that their time is worth zero and that's just not the right way to calculate returns. Your time has value, you could use this time to something more productive, you could work some extra hours at your job or you could take on another job or create another side hustle. And so here if you accounted for let's say you said that your time is worth $20 per hour and you work 10 hours per month on your rental that's $200 you should deduct from your returns because again, you could have earned this money doing something else. And once you take into account, so all the expenses and the value of your time, your returns drop very considerably. Then reason number two, the risks are also a lot greater than you might think. People will typically invest in rental properties because they think that they are safer than stocks. They, there is no daily quotation and so you have a greater sense of stability. There it's, it seems that it's not volatile, but the reality is very different. I actually think that rental properties are a lot riskier than stocks. And this is because you're making a private, illiquid, concentrated, highly leveraged investment and uh, this investment then also have some liability issues and some social risks. 
And I've covered this topic in another video that I'll, I'll link below in the description. But you know, rental property is typically you're gonna buy them with around 80% loan to value, which means that the 10% drop in your property value would mean that you lose half of your equity. Uh, so yes, rental properties are not quoted daily, but if they were, the volatility would be insane. Uh, if you just got an offer for 10% less, it will mean that you lose half of your equity. You don't see 50% changes in equity value in the stock market on a daily basis. Uh, but that's what you would see if you saw your rental property traded daily. And then, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, you'll also have, uh, you're making an illiquid investment, might be difficult to sell it someday. You're gonna have some social risks. Uh, you know, you have uh, people who put their lives into your property. Uh, people change over time. People can be quite uh, volatile themselves. Uh, they can change for the worse. I've, I've heard of landlords getting threatened or beaten up or even worse in the past. So I think the risks are a lot higher than you think. Also, another final point uh, here in reason two that I want to make is that even if you have an LLC or you have insurance, if shit hits the fan, you're gonna have your tenant, you know, sue you personally. Let's say uh, you have some mold growing in, uh, in the bathroom of your property and you didn't take care of it because you were not informed and then your tenant gets sick, he, he gets asthma or whatever. And he's not gonna sue just your LLC, he's also gonna sue you personally. And even if you win the case, this is gonna cause you to lose a lot of nights of sleep and uh, I don't think it's worth it. Then reason number three, I think that owning a rental property is also gonna handicap your primary income source, which is your career. If you own a rental property, you're gonna lose in flexibility. You're not gonna be able to take on every opportunity. You're not gonna be able to, let's say you, you, you live today in Dallas, Texas, and then tomorrow you get a new job in New York. If you didn't have a rental property, you, you, you're very flexible. You can just move to New York, take on that higher earning job, and that's really what's gonna make a big difference uh, financially in your life. But now if you own several rental properties in, in Texas, perhaps you're gonna be more reluctant to take this new opportunity. And so you lose on a lot of money indirectly and you don't even take that into account in many cases. You might also not advance as rapidly in your career, not just because you lose geographic flexibility, but also because you're, you have less time and energy. Uh, managing properties, even if you outsource the management to a property manager, you still have to spend a lot of time then uh, supervising your property manager. You also have to be spend time looking for the next deal, uh, looking for the next financing. All of that takes time and energy that's gonna be taken away from your primary career. And so you're probably not gonna advance as well. And I think that people would do be much better off focusing on their primary income source, make sure that that rises rapidly. And perhaps you invest in REITs instead of rental properties, uh, to give you an example. Then reason number four, it will not only handicap your career, it will also handicap your lifestyle. Now you, you're gonna be getting calls on the weekend, late at night, uh, it's gonna disturb your, your family life, your personal life. Uh, you're not gonna be as flexible also with traveling. Let's say you, you've been thinking of uh, taking a six months break to go uh, travel in Asia. How are you gonna do that if you have plenty of properties? Uh, there are always some issues, uh, things breaking down, a tenant that moves out, you need to bring a new one in. A lot of people seem to assume that having a property manager is really the miracle solution that resolves every issue, but I can tell you that it really isn't. Then it's the property manager that's gonna give you all the calls to check if you, they can do that or not, and you just cannot get away from all issues when owning rental properties. And then the last reason, number five, uh, perhaps the most important in my opinion, I don't see the point of investing today in rental properties when you could be invested in publicly listed REITs which are far cheaper. REITs last year dropped by 30% on average, but the value of their real estate remained more or less stable. And as a result, now you have a lot of REITs that are priced at large discounts to the net asset value of their properties. To give you one example, BSR REIT, which is a REIT that owns Texan apartment communities, is today priced at right around 60 cents on the dollar. Its net asset value per share is $22, but it's priced at $14 in the market. So, so what this means is that you get to buy an interest in its portfolio at 60 cents on the dollar, and then you get the added benefits of professional management, diversification, liquidity, limited liability, economies of scale, and many other things. And so 
if you can do this type of investment, why would you go through the hustle of uh, buying a rental property and have to deal with all the issues that come with it? Besides, publicly listed REITs have historically actually outperformed private real estate in most cases, according to various studies. I'll put uh, one or a few here in the screen so you can see them, but typically REITs have outperformed by two, three to four uh, percent, depending on the underlying real estate strategy. And so this outperformance comes mostly from the economies of scale, the lack of transaction costs when you buy REITs. Um, they also often invest in property sectors that are higher rewarding, like self-storage as an example. Uh, they get better cost of capital. I mean, they have many advantages that explain this uh, outperformance. And so again, today you get all of this at a discount, so I don't see the point of buying rental properties. Please let me know in the comment section below. I'm happy to learn more about your opinion. Uh, please subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more about how I invest in REITs to get my real estate allocation in my portfolio. And if you want to learn more also in real time about my latest REIT investments, please click the first link in the bio. It will redirect you to my Twitter page. See you at my next video. Bye-bye.